If you want to master mechanics to an extent 99% of players don't, you need to understand the 11 fundamentals behind perfecting the skill. The problem most people encounter is that their amazing at 3 other fundamentals are all right at 5 and just plain out terrible at the remaining 3 categories. This makes their mechanical skill set unevenly distributed and as a result they perform noticeably worse than they should and can as long as they put in some focused work on improving their 3 weaknesses. Today I'm making a fully structured in-depth video on how to master all 11 mechanical subcategories. So you once again can start progressing at a rapid rate as a player. Before we hop into the 11 fundamentals, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Honkai Star Rail. This game has already been crowned the best overall game on Google Play, as well as the best iPhone game on the App Store. What it is, is a new multi-platform space fantasy RPG from Hoyoverse, the makers of Genshin Impact. It's totally free and it also offers cross-platform, meaning whether you like to play with your friends on PS5, PC or mobile, you'll be able to play together. The game has gained over 80 million dollars downloads in their first six months, and in their new version of 1.5 update, you'll be able to experience an all new story in Bellobog. What is so good about Honkai Star Rail is that it is easy to pick up and play, but still a highly tactical game. The game has a rich, semi-open world experience with plenty of content for you to discover. Right now, they have two brand new limited time five-star characters, and the first one is Huo Huo, which is a wind-type support character. So she has the ability to restore her allies' health, as well as provide ATK and energy buffs for her teammates. Our Genti, which is the second limited time 5 star character, on the other side is a silent gentleman, a physical type character who primarily attacks with a spear and generally is a very cool feeling character. In this new update, you'll get to go on ghost busting missions, try out new characters, explore new stories, and on top of that, if you log in for 7 days, you get 10 free star rail special passes, which you can use to draw Huo Huo or Argenti. To download Honkai Star Rail and experience these new characters and new updates, simply go down to the top of the description below or the pinned comment and download. Right now is the perfect time to do so as you'll get 800 Stellar Jade. On top of that, you can use these redemption codes to get exclusive access to an additional 50 Stellar Jade, which is the in-game currency used in Honkai Star Rail. Thank you to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring today's video. Speed is the first fundamental and the reason we need to begin by talking about speed is because a lot of people overestimate the importance of having fast builds and edits and underestimate the importance of practicing at a pace where you can stay consistent. If you ever want to build a mechanic muscle memory that is top tier, you need to understand the five point prioritization list of mechanics. At the top of the list comes not messing up. This should always be your focus when practicing, regardless of how long it might take you to make an edit or build a certain build. Secondly, it comes doing the most optimal builds and edits in a given scenario. For example, making the right peaks or taking the right opportunities to peace control and not. This knowledge comes from experience and particularly playing against other players in creative or real game scenarios like ranked or tournaments. Up third, we have movement. Movement is very often neglected, but it is a crucial aspect to master if you want to reach the top, mechanically speaking. Fourth and second to last comes having a awareness over the opponent you're fighting at all times and taking opportunities you're given. Not losing awareness when having consistent mechanics will allow you to punish any mistake your opponent might make, whereas a losing awareness might result in you missing out on a chance to eliminate the enemy and worst case, this might cause you to go down in that very game because of that missed opportunity. Lastly comes the speed of which you do these things. If you focus on speed rather than the four other points I just talked about, you will learn extremely slowly and adapt a creative warrior skill set rather than a skill set that can actually be adapted and used in important real game situations like tournaments. Now that we've established the limited importance of speed, let's talk about how to consistently improve it every day you play. And let's begin by talking about how to improve it if you're a beginner to an intermediate player. What I strongly recommend is playing the map in the background footage. At this point, most YouTubers will tell you to play these edit downs. And edit downs are fantastic when it comes to learning edit on release off if you decided to make that major setting change. And I'll talk more on that later. But I much prefer to play something that simulates a real scenario I might actually find myself in, in tournaments or ranked, as practicing realistic scenarios is what I've found to be the most beneficial in terms of actual mechanical in-game improvement. The reason we use still standing bots and not moving targets is so we can isolate a practicing fast mechanics as an individual skill, without having to spend a lot of our brain power focusing on aiming on hard to hit moving targets. Now I highly doubt that most of you guys watching my channel will struggle with your mechanical speed. When you grind, speed is one of the most natural improving aspects, meaning even if you play full on brainlessly and just for fun, your mechanical speed will still improve. So if you're someone who already has fast mechanics and you're at a pretty good level as a player, but still want to improve your build and edit speed, I would undeniably just focus a lot of time on playing creative sonors against other good players, preferably 2v2s to 4v4s. Nothing else you will ever play will have the same improvement effect in terms 
of realistic mechanical speed improvement, like Sonors against good players well. The second fundamental by mastering mechanics is understanding the grid system. The grid system determines what angles and how far we can perform and edit at, as well as where we can place our builds. There are five essential moves you must know in order to build a high tier mechanical skill set. The first is high cones. High cones are simply when you place cones over walls, understanding the grid system to the point where you're able to place them on the enemy side of the wall and not your own. If you don't master this simple move, you will drastically limit yourself in terms of your mechanical skill level. This move is especially beneficial when it comes to getting high ground in both fights and endgames. It's also highly mad effective, meaning it doesn't waste any more mats than what is necessary to stop the opponent from continuously holding high ground. I enjoy playing pro realistic one ones to practice my cone placement and all other grid system fundamentals. This map is by far the best map to play when it comes to practicing realistic fighting scenarios in creative as well as developing a high tier grid system understanding. The second grid system move you must know is placing high walls. High walls, much like high cones, is one of the best moves to retake high ground. If you master the basics of high walls and cones, you'll be able to learn hundreds of other high ground retakes as well. To master high walls, it all comes down to understanding exactly where you need to position your mouse to place the second high wall. The most common mistake I see from players who think they're good mechanically is that they flick their mouse way too much, shaking up and down to place high walls and making their mouse movements uncontrolled. To avoid this, you must find the exact point in which the second wall places and build that into your muscle memory. Avoid trying to look flashy and focus on control. High stairs sounds extremely goofy, but understanding how far you can place stairs and use that to your advantage consistently will also make your mechanics a lot better. High stairs are mainly used to either throw the opponent off, doing the clicks ramp high ground retake, or very often both at the same time. This simple move is widely recognized as one of the most effective ways to gain vertical velocity. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, Marin, why are you talking so much about being able to gain height? A lot of players are super good at fighting from low ground positions. And although you can win fights consistently from low ground, the skill ceiling of being a high ground player in fights is much higher compared to the skill ceiling of being someone who prefers fighting from low ground. So don't nerf yourself and always try to practice fighting from the high ground position. The second to last and must know grid system fundamental is far edits, also known as far blueprint edits. Now, knowing how to perform far edits is essential as it often allows you to get free shots on the opponents you're fighting if you master this skill. I think most of you guys watching my channel know that if you hold your blueprint out, you can perform a way further edit compared to if you hold your gun or pickaxe out. Obviously, the most common situation this skill will be beneficial in is in box fights. So if you feel as though this is something of a weakness of yours, spending some time playing box fights will be a very good use of your time. The final grid system principle you must understand is how to place protected cones, stairs, and walls when peace controlling. A lot of people when peace controlling don't understand the grid system at all and overexpose themselves when placing their build pieces, often resulting in taking a lot of unnecessary damage. In order to build a muscle memory around good grid system understanding, you must slowly and surely practice it, using these gray lines as an indicator of where you are exposed and not, and finding the exact angle in which you can place your build pieces. Mastering the grid system to the highest extent is something nobody in the world currently does. There is a massive opportunity to get ahead of everyone if you build a flawless muscle memory based upon these five grid system basics. It will take a lot of reps to get there, but in the end, if you manage to successfully do it, you'll be able to see some incredible results as well. Peaks and timing is the third fundamental you need to master. Building a muscle memory with perfect peaks and timing can only be done if you've either been told how to perform perfect peaks, or if you've spent a ton of time yourself reflecting upon what makes a perfectly executed right hand peak. It's not something that comes naturally just from playing ranked or creative, so pay close attention to what I'm about to go over. In order to do a peak with perfection, there are five things you can never ever forget. The first is the build setup. This is what build pieces you've placed in the spot you're performing the peak from. The most popular and widely used peak in Fortnite is the peanut butter right hand edit. And in order to have the correct build setup, you need a one by one with a cone in your box, a cone above, and extremely importantly, a flat above your head as well. If you don't have a flat above your head or a cone inside your box, your time in the air when jumping to perform the peak will be a lot longer compared to if you have the elevation of the cone in your box and the flat above you so that you can hit your head on it and get pushed down again. The build setup cannot be be neglected when playing. Do not forget the flat above your head or the cone inside your box. Trust me, those 20 extra mats will make it a minimum of 5 times harder to hit you and it will always be worth the mat investment. The second is positioning and to perform a perfect peak you want to be hugging the wall. This is because from this spot we will do the most damage with our shotgun and the peak with the right movement will be perfected from this very spot. You can also perform good peaks from further behind in your box but the very best spot to place yourself is all the way in front hugging the wall. Once you've positioned yourself at the very 
very front of your box, you want to line up your body with these gray lines we talked about earlier. The gray lines indicate how the edit will actually look once you press confirm on it. So if your body is comfortably under the gray lines, you won't be able to get hit. You will be protected. When the build setup is perfect with a cone on a flat, you're hugging the wall and you've made sure you've lined up the edit using the gray lines, you need to do the correct movement once you confirm the edit to make yourself a hard target to hit. This can simply be done by holding the W key on your keyboard or joystick forward, then pressing the A button or slide the joystick to the left. And once you start gaining a slight bit of momentum, you jump whilst still performing the sideways move. It's crucial that you don't go backwards, or in other words, press your S key whilst in the air performing the peak. Then you will be super easy to hit. For window peaks, it's a little different as you need to perform a sidestep. A sidestep is a move that gives you a lot of velocity and makes you a very hard target to hit. To perform it, do the same as previously mentioned. Set up a box, position yourself into the wall, line up the gray lines and open the edit. Quickly press your D button, suit your shot, crouch and press A. As you can see in the background footage, this performs a super fast peak and you will as a result be nearly unhittable. The final thing you want to do is just make sure to reset after you've shot. If you're on keyboard, make sure to have scroll wheel reset enabled and on controller, just try to be as fast as possible. I need to make it crystal clear that performing perfect peaks is not something you'll be able to always do in fights, nor will it always be the best play. But having the knowledge of how to do it and a muscle memory that allows you to effortlessly perform them will be beneficial when it comes to developing a high tier competitive skill set. In order to have pro level mechanics, you need to understand peace control. A lot of people make the major mistake of thinking they have good peace control just because they're able to full box everyone. And although this is a phenomenal start to developing a pro tier skill set in regards to peace control, this trait is worthless if you're not able to convert the fact that you have full boxed the opponent to actually eliminating him or at least dealing a significant amount of damage. I see time and time again players who are much better than me at full boxing, but they don't know how to deal damage in a safe way after they've boxed the enemy, often resulting in them taking a hefty amount of damage or even going down. Good peace control is being able to trick the opponent and dealing damage to him without taking any back. There are three main ways of successfully doing this 100% of the time. Protected peace control is the first and following the peaks and grid system principles of using the gray lines and understanding where you can place build pieces whilst being fully protected behind the peak will help you build a flawless protected peace control muscle memory. Now this takes ages, it takes trying and failing and an unhealthy amount of reps just doing it in creative on your own consistently for weeks on end. When you peace someone whilst being fully protected you can do a right hand peak and you won't be able to get hit, do a high damage shot and then finish the fight by either just running at the opponent or doing another peak. Reset peace control is the second way of peace controlling in a safe way. This is when you see the opponent is looking at you and you don't have the opportunity to get in a good enough position to perform protected peace control. Reset peace control has been widely popularized by players like Clicks and Polarized and is one of the best ways, especially against good players, to get some free damage off. Unaware peace control is when you see that the opponent you're fighting is not aware of where you currently are. This is the only scenario where you can wide edit and fully expose yourself. However, that brings me to the fifth fundamental behind insane mechanics, maintaining good crosshair placement whilst performing builds and edits. Keeping your crosshair at head level when naturally running around and performing builds and edits will make your shots a lot easier to hit. I'll give you an example. When performing a window peek, if you hold your crosshair where the opponent's head will be, you will only have to make minor horizontal mouse adjustments. Not having to make both vertical and horizontal adjustments will of course make the shot noticeably easier to hit. The problem a lot of young talented players face today is that they want to look cool. So they don't focus on crosshair placement at all. They have a flicky playstyle that looks impressive, but when it comes to performing in ranked or tournaments, it's far from optimal. Having consistently good crosshair placement will also make having awareness over the opponents you're fighting a lot easier. Because the less movements you make when building and editing, the easier it is to keep track of everything going on around you. What I also often see is players keeping their crosshair down towards the ground when just casually rotating or running around the map. This will not only make having awareness in front of you 10 times harder, but also gathering peripheral awareness regarding what is going on around you to the left and right. The best place to always keep your crosshair is a head level of a player model. So if somebody surprises you and jumps you, you can just click your mouse button and you'll hit a max damage shot without even having to make any mouse corrections. One of the players that mastered his skill to the very highest extent is Epic Whale. When watching him play, you can tell that he has practiced maintaining solid and sustainable crosshair placement, and as a result, he makes eliminating even the best players look easy. Crosshair placement can also be used to line up shots behind peanut butter edits. If you do this to the pro level extent, you can simply use your movement to hit max damage shots every single time. There are so many benefits behind mastering crosshair placements, but if you can understand the importance of it and also have high 
next year mouse control, which is the sixth fundamental behind flawless mechanics, you will already be better than nearly anyone. Mastering mouse control can be defined by your skill in four subcategories. The first of which being accuracy. This is your ability to move the mouse from point A to point B precisely. For example, when performing a peanut butter edit, a top row edit, or when shooting a shotgun shot at an opponent. The second is pathing, and mastering this is really important when it comes to mechanics. Having good pathing means you don't overbuild or over edit. You know how to perform edits with minimal and fast mouse movements, not over flicking or overdoing anything unnecessary. Smoothness is the third pillar behind exceptional mouse control, and this is basically just moving from point A to B with consistent speed, and mastering smoothness will make your builds, edits, and aim way more sustainable, meaning it will be easier to stay at a high level if you master this aspect of mouse control. The final subcategory of good mouse control is of course speed. Speed is something that should only be focused on after you've mastered the first three pillars, but it is, as previously mentioned, something a lot of people just value so much to the point where they fixate on improving this aspect rather than actually building good habits around accuracy, pathing, and smoothness. To improve your mouse control, try and find how small movements you can make to perform builds and edits. For example, if you want to do a triple edit, try and do it with the most minimal mouse movements. Not only will you perform the triple edit a lot faster when doing this, but you'll also be able to maintain a way better awareness because your mouse movements won't shake up your point of view when fighting. If you additionally can maintain a good crosser placement when performing these edits, it will be almost impossible not to hit a max damage shot when the opponent is on the other side of the edits you're performing. The same mentality can be adapted for normal builds and edits. When doing 90s, performing high walls, cones, clicks, ramps, whatever, try and find the exact point where your builds place without having to overdo your mouse movements. If you can build a skill set with high tier mouse control and crosser placement, you will be one of the most consistent players there is. I do need to note that from personal experience, the absolute best way to quickly improve mouse control is by playing aim labs or Kovacs on a bit of a higher sensitivity than you normally play. For example, twice your sensitivity. You see, developing good mouse control does not depend on your sensitivity or FOV. Your mouse control is universal regardless of sense. If you're on console, this will of course be difficult, but the very same principles regarding accuracy, pathing, smoothness and speed are true for console players as well. The next fundamental is, in my opinion, one of the most overlooked to practice. What I'm talking about is being able to master scuffed and unique edits. When practicing mechanics, you need to put some time into practicing edits where you're in tough situations. There are three main examples I want to share with you all. The first being hugging wall edits. Making the edit to get out of your box and reboxing is super awkward, but having practiced it a little bit when warming up will make it a lot easier to successfully perform this one in tournaments, ranked, or even creative. Being able to perform a peanut butter edit even if you're hugging the wall or in another awkward position is also essential. A lot of missed opportunities happen because people fail at this scuffed edit. Stair flips, regardless of what position you're in, is also crucial to master. A lot of people are far from being the best at performing stair edits, but still don't spend any time practicing them. But from what I've seen, failing stair flips is one of the most common reasons behind people going down in fights. So get those reps in and practice it. Unique edits on the other side can, for example, be doing sideways stair edits to catch your opponent off guard, long downwards wall edits, or numerous different cone edits. If you want to get unique results in anything, you need to remember that you must have a unique skill set as well. So practicing things that most others will not can be highly beneficial in building a top tier skill set. Next up, we need to talk about movement. I think a lot of people don't understand the importance of mastering it. Movement is the best tool to make yourself a hard target to hit if you learn the basics behind the skill. The main factors behind succeeding movement wise is having a good crouch bind, making it easily accessible whilst still performing normal builds and edits. The same goes for your sprint bind, as mastering sprinting is one of the best tools to improve all around mechanics. And of course, knowing the grid system and gray lines to the point where you can practice upon solid fundamentals. The easiest way to exponentially get better movement is playing against good players, as most mistakes get punished when playing against other highly skilled competitors. On the map, a pro realistic one ones the majority of players queuing into matchmaking will be at a much higher level than on any other creative map. So try and play this map for a few minutes a day, either against a friend of yours or simply by hopping into matchmaking. Naturally, if you're a beginner, a lot of movements can be learned from simply free building, but the majority of you guys watching my channel are already at a high level, so free building is probably not the best use of your time if improving movement is a goal of yours. The ninth fundamental is by far the most important. What I'm talking about is awareness. Now, the reason awareness is the most important fundamental is because this attribute is what will allow us to act upon every opportunity we get to eliminate the player we're fighting. I've seen time and time again players who master all other fundamentals to literally a professional tier level, but lack awareness and as a result, they let go of so many opportunities to eliminate the opponent they're fighting and sadly sometimes also get eliminated themselves because of the lack of awareness. Every missed opportunity in a fight
teammate makes you a slightly worse player. Great players are all able to quickly act upon the first mistake an enemy makes, good players are often able to act upon the second, and average players are only able to act upon the third or fourth mistake an enemy might make. But awareness as a focus point when practicing, you'll probably not have as visually fast mechanics as if you just focus on building and editing, but it will help you build a skill set that will actually get you somewhere competitively speaking. Visual awareness is the most important aspect of the fundamental, or in other words, consistently looking at the player you're fighting. Auditory awareness can also be very helpful, but we want to try and never lose track of anyone we're fighting visually. If you're not able to have a full awareness when fighting, chances are you try to build and edit too much, you might be too flicky, or you might simply have your priorities wrong. The first priority when playing Fortnite is never losing track of the opposition. Everything else comes after. I'm talking builds, edits, everything. If you adapt that mentality, I can guarantee your progress will be much, much faster. Building is the second to last fundamental of today's video. And when it comes to building, if you follow all other nine fundamentals we've gone over today, you will be a good builder. A lot of people talk a lot about optimal keybinds and how important that is, but optimal building keybinds is far less important than just not having terrible keybinds. A lot of people think that having two build pieces on the same finger is really bad, when in reality, that really doesn't make a massive difference. What does make a massive difference is if you're playing with four build pieces on the same finger, then I would recommend switching, even though I know people who succeed at the very top playing with these unoptimal binds as well. I recently made a change to a mouse button because I was using two build pieces and editing on the same finger, but this has honestly just made my mix worse. I'm not a mouse button enjoyer, however, I do think having a build piece on your mouse will for most be the right play, just not for me. And boom, we are at the final fundamental of today's video, editing. Editing is very close to heart for me as editing very much made my entire career back in the day with edit courses. I will say that to become a good editor, it's all about reps, whether that be in creative, playing against your friends, or in ranked, grinding to improve your competitive abilities. One thing that actually made my editing a lot easier was getting a solid keyboard. The definite best keyboard for Fortnite is the Wooting 68G. I'll have that linked in the description if you want to check it out. But of course, the Apex Pro is also very, very good. If you struggle a lot with editing, I would strongly recommend putting in some work on edit courses, as that isolates editing as an individual skill, and you'll be able to exponentially improve your edits after only a few hours. For most of you watching, you'll probably already be pretty good editors. But if you want to take it a step further, you just need to work on your scuffed edits and perfect peak edits when you're playing creative. This can easily be adapted into real games and will be massively beneficial in terms of getting better and better tournament results. A lot of people also discuss whether to use edit on release or not, but the truth is you can definitely be great on both on and off. However, I think with the setting turned off, it's way easier to just sustainably and consistently make perfect peaks, meaning you will be a harder player to fight. One issue a lot of players that turn off edit on release often face is that they play with the XI same playstyle afterwards. If this is you, then there is no point in turning it off. You need to adapt your playstyle to whether edit on release is turned on or not. Having it turned on means you will rely on speed to outplay your opponents rather than just doing good peaks. Guys, I know it's sad that the video is coming to an end, but there you have it. If you master these 11 fundamentals, you'll be better than, so to say, everyone mechanically. Mastering all 11 is nearly impossible, but maybe you realized that you need to work on one specific fundamental in the coming weeks. If that's the case, then you have something you can isolate, work on, and quickly improve on. Thank you guys so much for spending over 20 minutes with me today. You guys are seriously the best. I hope you all go on to have a wonderful day and I will of course see you very very soon.